everyone and welcome to a little chatty repot video. I ordered these plants about a week ago, a little bit over a week ago, and it is time to repot them and give them a new home. Now these plants, like I said, arrived a little bit over a week ago and they had some time to acclimatize to my conditions and to my space. So I feel comfortable with repotting them. Usually you should wait about maybe two weeks ideally, but I am an impatient person. So I'm gonna start doing that right now. Plus I really, really, really want to get them out of the soil that they're in right now because uh, the soil that most plants are sold in is probably pure peat and pure peat just sucks. It's horrible, especially in our home environments where we don't have perfect conditions. I don't have the perfect humidity. I don't have the perfect air cir circulation. I sure as hell don't have enough light. So I need to put these into something that's a little bit more airy and a little bit more chunky. So that's gonna be the goal for today. If that sounds good to you, please grab yourself a cozy little beverage or a little snack or maybe some repots of your own. And let's have a fun little time, shall we? I think I wanna start off with this plant. This is my Apoballus acumit or something like that. I will have all the names on the screen as always. But yeah, this is, I think my first victim. And I will be actually potting her up into some semi-hydro because I know that this plant is a thirsty, thirsty girl. I've seen a couple of videos where people were talking about this plant and everybody pretty much mentioned how she's a thirsty girl and how she likes to wilt. Basically very similar, also I see a freaking fungus gnat. Basically very similar to a peace lily. Okay, she came out of the pot lovely. She has gorgeous, gorgeous little roots, which is always so great to see. Very, very fine roots. But yeah, I'm gonna, I'm gonna break up this root ball as much as possible. I'll try to be as gentle as possible, but honestly, I am not... Well, I'm not too worried about breaking some roots because roots will grow back. But yeah, I I really want to get these repotted because they deserve a better home and they shall get it. And then hopefully they will grow nice and lovely for me. Some of these plants like this one, for example, uh, they are a little bit, you know, compromised. They had some damage. I'm not sure if that damage occurred due to the shipping or just kind of adjusting to my space could be all of it but hopefully we can we can fix that and hopefully we can we can kind of get them to grow nice and lovely because for example this plant is really really just such a gorgeous plant has such gorgeous markings and i would love for her to be successful so as for any semi hydro repot we really, really got to get in there and remove all of the soil, which is always such a such a tedious task. I kind of enjoy um, playing around in the dirt and playing with the roads. It's always kind of, it's a fun experience. I don't know. I don't know how to explain it, but it's just the tactile feeling of having your hands in the dirt and in the roots and feeling the roots. It's just, it's so satisfying for some reason. And it reminds me that these plants are so much more than what we see on the surface because on the surface, of course, we see these beautiful, beautiful leaves, right? But there is this whole system that's below the surface that we really don't see. And it's such a great metaphor for honestly, everything in life, even people, because outside somebody could look freaking beautiful, but their roots could be rotten. Uh, did I just compare people to root rot? I guess I did. Okay, I see there is a little plug situation going on. I don't know if you'll be able to tell, but you see this very compacted part over here. That seems to me like a little plug. That's no good. I do not like compacted plugs because they hold a lot of water and they can lead to, uh, lead to root rot, which is never a fun situation. So I'm gonna try to break it up, but I am most certainly breaking some roots here because there is no way you can break up such a compact root ball without without actually breaking some roots. And as you can see, I don't know if you can see, hopefully you can see, uh, I am breaking definitely some roots. But again, I am not worried about it. As long as she has a good chunk of her root system left after this, she should be fine. 
I repotted recently some plants from soil to semi-hydro and honestly all of them took pretty freaking well. I, I didn't have any drama. Um, I, I actually filmed a video on that. It was my first time using semi-hydro and I can link it in the description below and I will also link the, the unboxing of all of these plants so you should check that out if you haven't. But yeah. Basically, I haven't I haven't had any setbacks using semi hydro, and I have been really, I have been kind of enjoying it. So, I wanna I wanna try it on with more plants, especially plants that I know could use it. Now she has quite quite a lot of roots. I did not expect that, so I might give her a little pot upgrade as well. That might be something that's happening. Mm, I'm not sure. Like, she could probably live in that pot for a little bit longer, but maybe it would be wise to actually up-pot her. Since I'm already doing all of this work, might as well. Might as well. But yeah, I think I'm pretty happy with how the roots are looking. I will definitely rinse them under some water in my sink just so I can actually get them to really, really be nice and clean. I'm also gonna go ahead and remove any of the yellowing dead leaves. We're gonna be getting rid of those because honestly, they're just ugly. <laughs> they're just ugly and I am not here for an ugly plant. We're doing all of this so we can beautify them. We're gonna be yassifying my plants and making them look stunning. So that is the goal and yellow leaves do not fit into that goal or into my fantasies. Also, I am gonna just quickly, while I'm having, while I have them out there, this is a great, great opportunity just to check them for pests. I haven't seen any since I got these plants, but you never freaking know, even though I, I have pests pretty much everywhere throughout my collection, so I'm not even worried about pests. Whenever people say to isolate your plants, for me, I take that advice with a very big grain of salt because honestly, I already have the pests. Like, what more can happen? <laughs> so, yeah. But you probably should isolate your plants. I just don't do it because I'm like, you know, whatever. Anyway, I'm gonna go ahead and rinse this, these roots and I'm gonna find a bigger pot because yeah, I do feel like this is just, it's just too small of a pot for this root system. So I will be right back. Alrighty, I am back and I just went ahead and rinsed the root system. It's not perfect, but it doesn't need to be perfect. I also have a little pot. I usually prefer to use transparent pots, but I'm kind of running low on them. And honestly, I don't want to waste them on a plant that I'm not sure I love yet. Just, just being completely honest. So I'm going to use this pot for this one. I mean, look at these roots. She'll be fine, but I think this will be a good size for her. At least for now, I didn't want to go like too, too big because then I might actually shock it and have a bigger risk of root rot. So I think this size is gonna be plenty, plenty good. But yeah, we're gonna be doing some semi-hydro, so this might be a little bit loud, but I will put basically one third of the way, I will fill with semi-hydro, and then I will put the plant and the roots above that. There we go, so one third of the way. Also, I'm not using self-watering pots. I'm just using normal nursery pots and leaving a, leaving a little reservoir at the bottom. That seems to be working well for me. And basically, I do fill up my plants or my pot like one third, like I said. And then I make sure that the reservoir kind of hits right below where the roots are. So basically, if my semi-hydro is up to here, that's how far I will also fill my reservoir but yeah so how are you guys doing what's been going on with your lives i finished i finished yesterday the menendez show on netflix the monsters series it was really good i really liked it i love me some true crime surprisingly enough i haven't heard of that case or i don't remember hearing about it i do listen to a lot of true crime podcasts and true crime shows uh, very, very into that stuff. So I was surprised that I haven't heard of it. Again, maybe I have, but I just have kind of pushed it aside. 
But yeah, I obviously loved the first season with Jeffrey Dahmer and his kind of case. That, that case is freaking nuts. And I think the, the first season was honestly a little bit more successful. This season, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't crazy about it. But yeah, I still, I'm still glad I watched it. Again, very, very crazy case. And honestly, it's so unbelievable to even think that that's not just some fiction show and that those events actually happened because that is, that is crazy. But yeah, I did finish that and I am excited for like they have a documentary coming up with them as well. So I'm excited to kind of see. I, I think I read that it's supposed to be kind of their side of the story. I do like the Netflix docu-series. I think they do them very, very well. So here we are. She is done. She is in semi-hydro. And hopefully she will like it. I think she will because she is a thirsty diva. So I think she will. She's a little bit crooked. Hopefully she will. <laughs> she will find her way. And next, I think I'm going to work on my Hoya Wayerii tricolor. Like I said in a couple of past videos now, I have been obsessed with Hoyas. They are freaking gorgeous. Oh, okay. She is, she is definitely just going to get a soil upgrade because she isn't very rooted, which I was expecting because Hoyas do have very shallow, small root systems. So I'm just going to gently, gently try to tease this soil apart. It does have some perlite, but again, you can really see just how how if I press this in my fist, it just kind of denses up and I don't know, I'm not, I'm just not a fan of it. So I'm going to put it in my regular chunky soil mixture. I do have a mix of some soil ninja, monstera and philodendron, and just some random, um, random mix that I bought before. So I will be using that. Oh, she is in pieces. Okay. Technically I could also separate her, but I don't want to do that, but she has lots of lovely pieces, which is amazing. But yeah, I just I just want to give her a soil refresh just so she has a uh, more nutrients, b a better soil because the soil ninja stuff is really really amazing. Also, I do I don't use their like specialty soils for different plants. I use their philodendron and monstera mix for pretty much everything because it is a good enough chunky mix that has some perlite, has some, uh, uh, what's it called, bark. Uh, I think it has some vermiculite, some charcoal, I think. So yeah, basically that's just the mix I use for 90% of my, of my soil plants. I have some semi-hydro plants now, so I can't say for 100% of my collection, but before I started using semi-hydro, I mean, that's also soil ninja. So I guess most what I'm trying to say is that most of my plants are in soil ninja and I do really, really, really love their soils. Back on the topic of shows, I do want to, I see I have a, 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 can't talk. That's, that's apparently a thing. I've seen that the new season of Heartstopper came out, season three, which is exciting. However, I haven't watched it yet. I haven't, I, I don't know. I need to be in a particular mood to watch that show because it is very lovey-dovey and teenagers, uh, teenagers kind of annoy me. So, I mean, I love them, but I hate them. And it's just like, oh my God, just like, stop it. <laughs> stop being annoying. But I also love them and I love their little complicated little relationship and how they make drama out of everything that's not supposed to be drama. I don't know. But yeah, it's definitely a show that I do need to be in a certain mood for. I do. I did love the first season. And then the second one, I don't know. I wasn't, I wasn't livid for the second one, if I am being completely honest. And that's something I'm always afraid of when watching or when falling in love with a show. Because if I like the first season and then, I'm, if I watch the first season and I like it, I'm always scared that the next one will be bad and that I won't like it. So, I don't know, I'm kind of holding on. I'm holding out on watching that. Maybe I'll watch it. Maybe I'll watch it like an evening or like a weekend where I'm feeling uh, like I need some rest or some chill. I don't know. Ooh, okay, this will be maybe a little bit of a challenge to pop back up, but we shall see. 
But yeah, it's definitely something that I do have on my watch list because, again, I did watch the first two seasons, so obviously I will be watching the third season. I mean, they are freaking little cutie pies, the two. But yeah, that's that's been definitely on my watch list. I've been getting slowly back into watching some TV shows. I used to be a big, big, big TV show watcher, but honestly, like all of my hobbies and interests in life, it comes and goes in wa in waves. Sometimes I'm super into watching shows, and sometimes I just couldn't care less. So yeah, right now I'm I'm kind of in the middle where I do want to watch show, but I'm shows. But I'm kind of selective of what I want. I'm kind of more in the mood for the moodier, darker stuff. Another show that I really got fed up with is Drag Race and Drag Race or drag content in general. I just, I don't know. I haven't watched any of the new like international seasons or UK season six or even the global all stars, which I hear is a mess. So I'm just... That's, that's, that's sad to me because Drag Race is definitely a show that I watched for years, religiously, every season. I loved it. I mean, I still love it. I still love the queens, but it just, it got so repetitive. It got so predictable. It got so um, produced. And I am just not a fan of that. I'm not a fan of that. So... I will most likely only be following the like main main franchise seasons. So like the next season, which is season 17, which will probably be coming out somewhere in December, January, I assume, if they're following their their previous trends, which they probably will, because honestly, they're just they're pumping that shit out. And I think that's also part of the problem. They're pumping out so much of that content that it just gets so, so oversaturated and not fun anymore. Alrighty, so we have the Hoya Waeri Eye Tricolor. She is potted up. Again, not, not an upgrade or not a pot upgrade, just a soil upgrade, just to give her maybe a little bit of a better soil situation. So while we are in the Hoya spirit, I guess we could also do my pubic calyx splash. And as you can see, she already started to grow. What a gorgeous, gorgeous gal. And I did put her on this little golden trellis that I would probably just remove because she hasn't really clinged onto it. But yeah, I do have this cute little trellis. But also I tried watching the new Dragula season, which is another kind of drag-esque show. And I just, again, that show just became so kind of I, I don't know I do I do like it more than drag race in a lot of ways but it is just the pacing of it is not good in my opinion and parts are dragged out some parts are very I don't know there is always the, the uh, very unnecessary and very very clearly fake cauldron drama but I love the monsters their creativity is off the freaking charts they're looks are amazing i see that everybody is thirsting over gray matter and i agree he is handsome as hell out of drag also i love i love 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 when the spooky queens like the super horror queens are just are just cute little cinnamon buns out of drag i love that stuff because most of the time if they have like you know, they if they have more alternative drag, they also have a more alternative look out of drag. But when they're all just cute little cinnamon bubbly boys, I'm like, that is freaking adorable. I love you. So yeah, but the cast, every year the cast is just amazing. It's just the show and me being fed up with with production and Hollywood in general, I suppose. But I still support very much. I do support the girlies and I support what the artists do. And I try to go, I'm actually going to see Bob. That's a fun little thing. I'm actually going to see Bob in January. She's coming to our country, which is very exciting because we usually don't get drag queens uh, in our country. We usually don't get pretty much anybody famous in our country. I mean, we did have a couple of famous people, but you know what I mean. We are a small, small country, so 
that's very conservative as well. So drag queens, I was very shook when I saw that Bob is coming to our city or our country, I guess. It's not my city, but I live close by. It's the capital city. Anyway, I'm blabbering. But yeah, she's coming. And of course, I got tickets and it's going to be amazing. And I'm so excited. I'm talking about Bob the drag queen, of course. If anybody is not familiar, she is hilarious. Such a hilarious, hilarious, hilarious person. I'm excited to see her. Okay, the pubic calyx doesn't have the biggest root system ever, which again, it's a Hoya, so I kind of expect it, but you can tell this is just, I, I don't like this soil. <laughs> it's not chunky, it's not, it's not nice, and I want my plants to be in really, really nice substrates. So, yes, let's get her into something better, but she is such a gorgeous plant. I love her so much and I do hope she grows lovely for me and maybe even blooms one day. That would be stunning. Like I, like I said before, I have been really, really getting into Hoyas and I want them all. <laughs> I want to basically collect them like Pokemon and I have been obsessed and I also just want them all to bloom for me. Which is very interesting because when I started this journey and when I was getting into plants, I wasn't really a fan of uh, flowering plants and I don't really care for the blooms of any plant. But once you get those first blooms, it's like, oh yeah, oh yeah, now, now I get it. Now I, now I get the hype because they truly are just so special, so gorgeous and it is... It is so rewarding when your plant gives you something like like that is their their fruit. It's their it's their labor. It's their work. It's their you know what I mean. It's just so amazing. Like I know it's kind of silly, but like I don't know. I I love it. It just makes me so freaking happy whenever I see any of my hoyas bloom. I am just so excited for them. Now of course I do have other plants that do like to flower or produce in fluorescence like Anthurium. Uh, Aglionema. Did I have? I I did have one philodendron bloom on me, which was my silver sword, and then it died afterwards. Alocasia. Oh god, I I hate when alocasias bloom. First of all, those blooms are just they're ugly. They're just in fluorescence. But why I hate when alocasias bloom in particular? It, I feel like whenever my alocasia blooms, it will die. It will promptly die. Or my calafia. This is my calafia worship with CI. She was looking so gorgeous. She bloomed and then she just died. I mean, she's not dead, but she gave me a lot of trouble after blooming and she's not sizing up anymore and she's just looking very ugly. So yeah, some plants I don't like when they bloom because they use up so much energy for their blooms and it's just... It's a whole freaking mess. Speaking of mess, I can see that I am making a big one over here. But oh well. Hoya Pubicalic Splash. She is done. Let me actually go ahead and put her back on her little cute trellis. I got this trellis from <clears throat> a local plant store. And I think it's very adorable. And I'm also going to just wrap this vine around here. Um, counterclockwise, which is so clockwise. I always... <laughs> So you want to kind of, uh, I don't know if this is true or not, but you basically want to wrap your Hoya vines in anti-clockwise. And I always get confused what's clockwise and what's anti-clockwise. So this is clockwise. So that would be anti-clockwise. Okay. So I always have to kind of do a little gesture with my finger. So, yeah. Alrighty, she is done. She is looking so cute and so pretty. I mean, she was looking cute and pretty before, but now she has a nice little healthy soil so i'm gonna put her to the side okay my legs are falling asleep a little bit oh but we have two more plants to go so let's do this little kildi next this is my jose bueno she is a very 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 small plug plant and usually oh oh she's very well rooted i might give her a repot in that situation i didn't realize she was rooted I was also thinking of maybe putting her into semi-hydro. Um, pa, 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 but I don't know. Oh god, she is very rooted. Usually I have a, I have either a miss or a hit or miss relationship 
with like these little baby plug plants because they will either I will either forget to water them because they're so small and they dry out so fast and then they will rot or I will have really great success with them. I mean, I guess, I mean, duh, that can happen with any plant. Wow. Wow. But yeah, I, I don't know. Just in particular, for some reason, baby plants for me are harder to take care of. But I guess juvenile plants in general actually are harder to take care of because once a plant gets established and kind of grows larger, I feel like it's easier to take care of, honestly. Like, uh, I mean, it's harder to maneuver around than if you have to like water it or if you have to, you know, shower it. That's a little bit of a challenge. But I do feel like they get more resilience to pests, to damage. And yeah, I don't know. Also, I'm sorry if my voice is cracking. It's actually pretty early in the morning. And this is kind of the first, this is the first task of my day today, actually. And I don't know. I just wanted to have a chill little chatty repot. So that's why I'm here. But yeah, the roots are looking gorgeous. And I just want to get rid of all of these, this old freaking soil because we don't want that. This cutie deserves better. She, uh, she probably arrived in the, uh, in the worst condition of them all. She is looking, she, she's looking kind of mangled and not that great, but uh, I'm pretty sure she will make a recovery. In general, I have pretty good luck with philodendron, except thrips. They are a thrip magnet. Any philodendron that I ever had has or had strips. It's just ridiculous. They love freaking philodendrons. They love monsteras, but they love philodendrons even more. And it's always such a pain in the ass. So whenever I get a philodendron, I'm like, yeah, you're gonna, you're gonna get thrips. I, I seriously, I can only maybe think of one, perhaps two philodendrons that never had thrips in my collection, but the rest of them, good God, past freaking madness. But yeah, I'm gonna get a little bit of a bigger pot and I'll be right back. Oh, Jesus Christ, my legs seriously fell asleep. Like, oh, okay, I am back. I actually got a cute, oh, I mean, it's not cute. It's a plastic cup and I'm gonna do a little no drainage situation for her because she is such a small plant. So I just wanna, I just want to make my life easier and I'm actually going to try this thing where I put a little bit of semi-hydro at the bottom of the pot and then put the soil on top. We're, we're experimenting over here. We'll see. We'll see what that will do. I, des I decided to go for, I didn't have, like I only had this little pot and then I had like a four inch pot which would be probably too big. And I was scared of shocking the plants. So I decided to go for the cup method. And I decided to go for no drainage. Uh, j just to try it. Just to try it. Just to see what will happen. Plus I do like. I do like a no drainage system. Because it does make my life easier. Again especially. 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 For smaller plants that do tend to dry out very very easily it just makes life much more convenient so yeah hopefully hopefully she will she will like this living situation i don't i don't think i could be wrong obviously i haven't had this plant for long but i don't think this should be a thirsty or a very demanding philodendron it does look pretty pretty kind of easy care from what I've seen from other people, and of course, kind of my experience with with these kind of beheading types of philodendrons, but we will see. We will see. I do hope she will do fine in this setup, but yeah, there she is. So we have a little bit a uh, layer of semi hydro at the bottom, soil, and I will keep the reservoir filled till the soil line, basically. So. That should be cute. Oh God, my hands got dirty. So yeah, I don't, I don't particularly love planting my plants in like plastic cups because they look ugly. But uh, you know, when you have over 100 plants, not everybody can go in a cute little pot. 
However, somebody who will go in a cute little pot is this girly, which is my Sephora Prostrata or Little Baby. And I will be planting her directly into this cutie little pot. I usually don't plant plants directly into like decorative pots, mostly because they are usually ceramic or stone or whatever, which makes them heavy. And because I do like to be easily able to check the, uh, the situation of the roots. Why did I say it like that? I don't know. <laughs> but yeah, I will be potting her up into this little pot because I just think plants like this that are... Like this plant is not... This plant is not for me, oh, I want to grow it, I want to see it bloom, I want to blah, blah, blah. Like it's not about meeting its optimal goal. This plant is purely decorative. This is very much like a flower arrangement to me. It's very just sculptural and I think it will look better pointed directly into a pot instead of just kind of being in a nursery pot. She does have quite pathetic roots though. I did not I did not expect that. So that that pot might be even too big for her honestly. So we might have to switch our plans. I'm looking, I do have another pot that she might actually work in better, which is very cute, by the way. It's a very cute pot. Let me actually get it. I think it might work better. I think it might work better, but yeah, she she doesn't have, I guess for let me show you first this. She doesn't have that great of a root system and she has very, very dainty roots. But yeah, let me get... Let me get that other pot I have and I'll show you. Alrighty, so here we are. And this is a pot, I don't know, I think it's from Firm Living. I do like their pots. They are very cute. However, this one did get like patina, which I, I don't know how, like, I don't know. I wish it stayed white, honestly, because I'm kind of a perfectionist. But I did try to wash it off. It's not possible. So I'm trying, so I'm being like, maybe we should embrace it. And I actually do think that this plan, yeah, this is, this is going to be the combo. We're doing this. We're doing it. This is going to be cute. This is going to be so cute. But yeah, this pot is just gorgeous. It's so beautiful. And it does have a drainage hole, which is amazing. So I'm actually going to remove the saucer. I don't need the saucer here. Getting dirty. But yeah, this is such a cutie, patootie, little polite. Now, from what I've also heard about this guy is that it does like to drop its leaves. It's very, it's very sensitive. So I do expect some leaf droppage after the repot. And I'm just, I'm just breaking roots here. So I'm actually not gonna, I'm not gonna remove this whole soil ball. I would love to, love to, but I'm not going to because I'm afraid that I would just damage too, too many of the roots, which obviously wouldn't be great. So I'm just gonna leave her as is and hopefully she will just be fine and root well into this. I, I do hope so. I never had this plant. I never had a plant that's similar, so yeah, I'm not sure what to expect, but I really, really, really want to get into more kind of this shapey architectural kind of plant. I mean, obviously, this is just a little baby, so it's not, it doesn't have like a big impact, like, I don't know, an olive tree or whatever. But I couldn't even have an olive tree because I do not have the right conditions for it. That's, that's actually a, <laughs> a really fun gag whenever I see like the design people or whatever, putting in olive trees or fiddle leaf trees into their home and then they put them into a dark corner. I just, have you not read anything about that plant? Literally, have you not even Googled what the plant needs? Because that plant will die. And I am, I am not one of those crazy plant parents or a plant police. Like, I don't care. It's your plant. It's your money. You can do whatever you want with it. But if you're buying a tree, like a big ass tree, it probably costs a lot of money. And I would personally, per this is just personal advice, I would personally do some research into how to actually care for it and what its care needs are. But yeah, that's, that's just silly old me, you know? But yeah, 
here we are. She is looking stunning. I love her. Okay, I'm actually so glad that I potted her into this pot. She looks so freaking beautiful. Just such a little, such a little cutie pie and just adds such a different different vibe to my space which i love and with that we are actually finished we repotted everybody i wanted to repot i'm so happy this went by so quickly i love to repot it is my favorite 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 plant chore and of course when i get to do it with you guys and talk it's even more freaking fun so i do hope you enjoyed it as well just to give you a little recap we repotted hoya pubicalix splash we repotted philodendron jose bueno bueno i never know how to pronounce that last part we repotted this buddy again apple apple ballast acumitissima something like that <laughs> we repotted my hoya what yet ti tricolor and lastly we repotted sephora prostrata or little baby and we made a big freaking mess that I have to clean up right now. And I'm not excited about that. This is this is my least favorite part of the plant chores or app of the repotting because now I have to clean all of this up. Wait. Anyway, I do hope you enjoyed it. I hope you got something out of it. Let me know what shows you are watching right now or enjoying. Or if you have any recommendations for a darker, spookier themed show, please leave them in the description below. Let me know if you have any of these plans. I would love to hear about that. On that note, I wish you all the best. I hope you have an amazing freaking day. And I will see you in the next one. Goodbye. Yeah.